we go again. Hello, folks, and welcome to the fastest half hour in the cryptid world. This week in Bigfoot, the new show that scours the internet and the Bigfoot community each and every week to bring you the people, the places, and the stories making headlines around the Bigfoot world. Then we take it, we wrap it up in a nice, neat 30 minute package for you. If it has a new Sasquatch, Big for the Wild Man, trust me, you know it, we've got you covered. Here's what we got on tap for the week of March 4th, 2024. Bigfoot in the British Isles, a shocking discovery and upcoming conference has everyone in the United Kingdom seeing Bigfoot. A massive new species is discovered in the Amazon rainforest, Mike Lucci's got that story for us, and Snow Up the Prime sides with Todd Standing in a must-see two minutes with. These stories and more Bigfoot news than anywhere else in the civilized world, so you better settle in, buckle up, and pay attention, because we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. You ready? Is the clock's ticking? Here we go. Maine's 100 Mile Woods is a vast expanse of pristine wilderness, shrouded in mystery and teeming with the wonders of nature. Nestled in the heart of the state, this untouched region has long captivated the imaginations of adventurers, scientists, and Bigfoot researchers alike. Among the tales that echo through the towering pine trees and rustling leaves is the enduring legend of our good friend Bigfoot, as the mysterious and elusive creature has long been spotted roaming the dense forests of the northeastern United States. Maine's 100 Mile Woods, also known as the North Maine Woods, spans a vast area of approximately 3.5 million acres, making it one of the largest undeveloped forest areas east of the Mississippi. Yeah. This remote wilderness has long been a haven for outdoor enthusiasts, offering a playground for hikers, anglers, and nature lovers seeking solitude amid the towering trees and crystal clear lakes. The legend of Bigfoot has been a staple of Maine folklore for centuries, and while it's true the creature is often associated with the Pacific Northwest, tales of the wild man have cropped up in various regions, including the dense woods of the Pine Tree State. Locals, visitors, and our very own Snowwalker Prime have reported sightings and encounters with a large, hairy, ape-like creature sparking debates about the existence of Bigfoot in the Hundred Mile Woods. And we're at up to where Kathy saw the, saw the thing, which is uh, just up here in front of us in the with this brook. Wow, there are some huge, huge trees in here. You can't really tell, but the spruce tree right behind me is like, I don't know, 120, 130 feet tall, maybe taller. And uh, those are a massive cedar tree. Well, by East Coast standards, maybe not by West Coast. All right, so we've got, looks like 16 inches from the toe to the heel. And let's we'll see in the center. What do we got about six inches wide? That's pretty much the same width as the one in Turner. My foot's about four inches. Yeah, four inches wide. This is a six. It's a little wider up here. It's you got a divot that makes it kind of southern back here by the heel. You still got a, the heel itself is almost five inches. These numerous eyewitness accounts only add an extra layer of intrigue to the legend of Bigfoot down east. Deep within the 100 mile woods, hikers have reported hearing eerie calls echoing through the trees, mysterious footprints discovered in the mud, and even fleeting glimpses of the massive, shadowy figure disappearing into the thick underbrush. And while skeptics, as usual, attribute these experiences to overactive imaginations, those exploring the wilderness often remain convinced that something truly extraordinary lurks in the shadows. There was something crouching that looked like a, a person in a brown suit. Maine's 100 Mile Woods stands as a testament to the untamed beauty of the natural world. Among the rustling leaves and the calls of distant wildlife, the legend of Bigfoot adds a touch of magic to this remote wilderness. And as adventurers continue to explore the mysteries within the 100 Mile Woods, the legend of Bigfoot ensures that the allure of the unknown remains an enduring aspect of this captivating landscape.
Scientists made a groundbreaking discovery in the Amazon rainforest. They discovered a second species of green anaconda while studying samples from anacondas coming out of nine countries over the span of 20 years. The second species was named Eumectus akima, aka the northern green anaconda. They discovered genetic distinctions between the two green anaconda species despite them looking almost identical. They split in their evolutionary timeline about 10 million years ago and are about 5.5% different from each other. Once we got those first genetic trees, our jaws just dropped a giant snake that, as it turns out, is a staggering 5.5% genetically different from the anacondas we knew of before. To put this in perspective, we're only 2% different from chimps. The northern green anaconda can grow up to 20 feet long. It lives in the North Amazon Basin, hence its name. I know the story isn't necessarily Bigfoot related, but it goes to show we're still making some pretty big discoveries in our world's wilderness. If a 20 foot long snake can remain undiscovered this long, how conceivable does the idea of it become for a 7 to 8 foot tall hominid? What else is there that's new that might be lost before we even know about it? In the United Kingdom, there's an outdoor sport called co-steering which generally combines the exploration of coastal regions with activities such as swimming, climbing, jumping, and sometimes cave exploration. Team members often attempt to navigate the rocky coastlines while overcoming obstacles like cliffs and rocks. So now you know. On Saturday, March 2nd, a group of these people from a group called Rock Solid Coast Steering in Torquay, which is a charming seaside town near Devon, stumbled upon something quite unexpected during their recent coastal journey. As the team followed the Maiden Comb Coast path, they came upon a set of peculiar footprints that left them astonished and admittedly a bit weirded out. One team member went on to describe the find. The prints were big, I'm a size 11, and they were half as big again. Clearly a barefoot, every print was perfect like the one in the photo. So that would make the print approximately a size 16. It's frustrating because once again, there's nothing in the photo to show scale. The unusual footprints discovered near the Watkin Woods raised speculation that they might belong to the elusive local legend, Bigfoot. The team members stated that the prints emerged from the nearby woods, followed the coast path for about 20 meters, and then mysteriously disappeared back into the forest. This recent discovery stirred up memories of a series of sightings back in the same area in 2006. Witnesses reported encountering a creature resembling Bigfoot, an ape-like being standing around five feet tall, covered in brown hair with a green face, and notably, no tail. Several of the eyewitnesses claimed that the creature showed tremendous ability, swinging from tree branches on two separate occasions. In 2022, when reports of Littlefoot sightings in Devon surfaced, John Downs, director of the North Devon Center for 14 Zoology, acknowledged the numerous reports of similar creatures in Devonshire Woodland, emphasizing the credibility and cooperation of these accounts. And if that's not enough, in 2018, a man taking the train from Exeter to Bristol claimed to see a Bigfoot-like creature in the field taking massive strides along a hedgerow. At a guess, I would have said it was 70 to 100 meters away from the train. My eyes were glued on it at this point. I was watching the way this thing was walking, almost towards the side of the field. It was edged right up to the hedgerow as if to walk alongside the hedge itself, almost like it was using the hedge for cover. And while such sightings are more commonly associated with North America, Fans of the creature have long wondered about the possibility of Bigfoot wandering the British Isles. Now, this story perfectly aligns with the upcoming Cryptid Conference UK, free event scheduled for July 20th. The conference will take place at the charming Purple Spoons Cafe in Burnham-on-Sea, quaint town in Somerset, England, situated in, on the Bristol coast, directly north of the Maidencombe discovery. And so, as researchers such as Brian Sharp King, Rich Daniels, and our very own Gwen Purcell prepare to talk Bigfoot and other high strangeness in Burnham on Sea for this conference, this recent footprint find only adds an unexpected twist to the conference's arrival. We wish them all the best of luck jumping over the pond at this Cryptid Conference UK. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Larynx. As the snows of winter melt and spring is right around the corner, Bigfoot conferences are popping up all over the country. That being said, there's still only one guy we all turn to to keep us up to speed on the who's, the what's, and the where's, and that's Chuck Larson with this year's first conference spotlight. This week's conference spotlight is the Georgia Bigfoot Conference happening March 15th and 16th at the Dillard House in Dillard, Georgia. 
This two-day event starts on Friday the 15th at 3 p.m. with the Bigfoot Roundtable that goes until 6. And then on Saturday, the Bigfoot Conference starts at 8.30 in the morning and also goes until 6. Tickets for the Friday Roundtable are $5, while tickets for the Saturday Conference are $20. Tickets for both days can be purchased on the conference website at georgiabigfootconference.com. Speakers for this event include Ron Moorhead, Mark Muncy, and Jessica Jones, the Cryptid Hunters. For more information, you can go to the website or visit the Georgia Bigfoot Conference Facebook page. And that's this week's Conference Spotlight. So this video found its way on the uh, Coalition for Critical Thinking and Bigfoot Research Facebook page. What's he doing? Squish boy. I've seen this video before and decided to take a deeper dive. It comes from the YouTube channel Flamingo One, not sure if I pronounced that right, and it was published on April 30th, 2011. It was allegedly filmed in the Great Smoky Mountains at Klingman's Dome, the highest point in Tennessee near the town of Gatlinburg, which happens to have the state's only ski area. Uh, the video's description says, We were walking along the trail when we saw a group of people looking up at the trees. They said it looked like a bear, I'm assuming they're talking about the figure in question, but it was on two legs. We see multiple witnesses, some comments noted the uh, crows slash ravens, a potential Bigfoot sign according to some people, pretty interesting detail. And uh, if you also think it's kind of odd how many people we see didn't seem to notice or mind the figure looming above on that ridge. Interesting footage to say the least, let us know what you think it shows. All right folks, if you check your watches you'll notice that we are officially halfway through episode 49, which can only mean one thing. It's the part of the show that each and every week we give to our good friend Michael Merchant, you might know him as Snow Walker Prime, screen time so he can speak his mind and get whatever bothering him off his chest. Last week, he openly aired his Jeremy Corbell man crush. This week, he's siding with Todd Standing. Here he is again. This is Two Minutes With. Echo Station 3 a AMG, have you seen this photo of Bigfoot? It has eyelashes. You mean that one that Todd doctored up? No, this is a brand new one. Oh, do tell. It's been circulating for a while now. Everybody has an opinion on it, and I wanted to know what you thought about it. Well, I would say that it has been altered through Photoshop. You don't think it's a real Bigfoot? No, definitely not. Like, like how sure are you? 10%, 20%? I'd say I'm 100% sure that that's not a real Bigfoot. I say I'm a million percent. That is better than 100%. A million percent? A million percent! Well, it seems like you've got good company. What do you mean by that? I'm just saying you, you agree with the big name. Big names as in... That's right, Bigfoot expert. Oh God. Yeah, that Bigfoot expert, Todd, standing. Yeah, he, he has to think it's real, right? Do you want the good news or the bad news first? Well, let's see what kind of good news we've got. Well, you know that guy, Stinker Stunker, a uh, Thinker Thunker? Hey, the Stinker Thunker. The Stinker that's a Thinker Thunker? Yeah. Well, of course he thinks it's real. Well, that's not surprising. <laughs> because the guy is using techniques that I've been using for like 10 years now and developed uh, and he didn't give me any credit to that, so that's, uh, that's kind of not cool. So, moron, if my face matches, anybody's face matches. And a bunch of other people think it's real. There's this one guy that says that it can't be duplicated because it's got too many components. 
that it couldn't be done with Photoshop. Okay, arguing for a negative, yeah. But I'm happy to announce that at least one Bigfoot expert totally agrees with you. The suspense is killing me. Todd Standing, he thinks it's Photoshop. And if you're not gonna come forward, shut your mouth and stay hidden. Wait, what? To Todd doesn't think it's real? No, nope. he thinks it's Photoshop. He's spoken to experts and he's confirmed that his Photoshop is not, not real. Oh my God. Yeah, you and Todd agree. Son of a <laughs> mother f God. Son of a fuck, fuck, fuck. Gee, I didn't, I didn't realize you were gonna take it so hard. Son of a bitch. Well, I changed my mind. Well, what do you mean you changed your mind? That photo is amazing. It has to be a Sasquatch. I mean, for God's sakes, you can see the eyelashes. You're being sarcastic, right? I, I don't see you flashing the gang sign. No, I'm, I'm totally serious. I, I'm fully on board. 100% confirmation. Real Sasquatch. Mystery solved. Done deal. Congratulations. What? I'm confused. You heard me right. That's 100% confirmation. No one could fake it. Too intricate, too detailed. It's been aged to look like a 70 photograph. You can't do that with AI or Photoshop. You can't images together and make things that aren't real with Photoshop. Don't look on the Richard Nixon scooter, make a television, North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Be a Bigfoot. I really don't know if you're being sarcastic or, or, or telling. No, no, I'm 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 being completely honest with you here. Uh, it's 100% real. Are you only saying it's real because Todd says it's not? Well, we're waiting. Well, I I I, I wouldn't put it that way exactly. That that's kind of what it seems like is going on here. To be honest, if Todd thinks it's fake, it has to be real. It has to be. Uh, I don't think that's the proper application of logic. This is the man that thinks Bigfoot's cutting gondola cables. Yeah, I know. We just talked about that yesterday. But you originally said you thought it was fake. I was just testing to see if you were paying attention. It was a test. I don't think you're being honest here. Look, I thought you'd be happy. You've won. You've proven the existence of Sasquatch. We don't have to have these walks anymore. No, 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 we do. Brendan says we still have to do these. I don't see the point. You've proven the existence of Sasquatch. What is there to debate? Well, the merit of every single uh, example. That, that, that's gonna take forever. That's what I'm saying. We need to get busy and, and, and you know, buckle down. Cause you're really doing more harm than good. Get out the elbow grease. What the hell have we been doing? We've done a solid year of these. We've walked 30 miles on this road. Good thing too, cause your heart needs all the help it can get. Hooray for you. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Brendan says you can't quit. Wild Bigfoot by Larix, the official hat of This Week in Bigfoot, sponsored by Larix. If you're a sponge for information on cryptozoology and other high strangest instances, then you should find this interesting. Bigfoot to Mothman, a global encyclopedia of legendary beasts and monsters, is a new encyclopedia that catalogs dozens of different cryptids. It was written by Margot DeMello, assistant professor of anthropology at Carroll College in Helena, Montana. The encyclopedia is 320 pages long and is divided into two sections. The first part is titled Cryptids and consists of 53 individual entries. The second part is dedicated to extinct, invented, or mythical creatures similar to cryptids, which contains 41 individual entries. It contains popular cryptids like Bigfoot and Mothman, along with lesser known beings dwelling in the remote jungles of Africa and South America. We left a link where you can order in the video's description. If you get a copy, definitely let us know what you think of it. Now, to be honest, sometimes I find the Bigfoot community a bit frustrating. The bickering, infighting, hoaxing, and grandstanding can get a bit tiresome. But every once in a while, I come across something that restores my faith in the legend. I think you've heard me talk about this more than once. And YouTube creator Deep in the Woods 16 was just one of those instances. If you search those words, you'll come across a very nondescript YouTube channel, no fancy thumbnails, and only three home videos all posted earlier this year, the latest last week. Okay, so today the people who are going to be Bigfoot hunting is my dad, the video is simply entitled dad, West Virginia Uncle Bigfoot Hunt dad, Days 1, dad, 2, and 3 Grandpa. feature a father, his young son Connor, and his friends on day hikes okay, throughout start. Randolph County in West Virginia, taking in nature Call and searching for signs of Bigfoot. For children, the legend of Bigfoot is not a monstrous tale, but a story woven with threads of curiosity and awe. 
They envision Bigfoot as a mythical being, shrouded in mystery, leaving behind only elusive footprints and a feeling of magic in the air. To them, Bigfoot is not a creature to be feared, but a friend waiting to be discovered, a benevolent force embodying the essence of the untamed wilderness. We just... I am literally freaked out of what I just heard. We know that Bigfoot, when you knock with a stick, um, that's what Bigfoot does to communicate. We knocked with a stick and something actually communicated with us. And as the days so went by for Connor and his friends, the shared excitement, out. the huddled conversations, Let's and the thrill the of exploring camera. the unknown yeah. were not just about the elusive creature Bigfoot. They were about the joy of spending quality time with family and friends in the embrace of the great outdoors. Bigfoot, in all of its mystical glory, served as a catalyst for their bonding, their laughter, and the simple pleasure of being together in a natural setting. And as the children emerged from the woods on day three, their hearts racing with the thought that they may have communicated with the creature through wood knocks, it's important for all of us to reflect on one of the main reasons why the legend captivated our imaginations in the first place. Beyond the allure of the mythical giant, the Bigfoot legend held a deeper significance, called to reconnect with nature and more importantly, with each other. Opening the trail camera to turn it on. So in the eyes of children, Connor and his friends, Bigfoot became a symbol of the unexplored wonders of the world. A reminder that even in the mysterious depths of the wilderness, there's room for imagination, curiosity, and the enduring magic of childhood. Now, I wholeheartedly applaud Connor's dad for sharing his interest in Bigfoot and the outdoors with his son and friends. There should be more fathers like him. Did you notice there were no iPhones, no gaming devices in their hands, and most certainly they were not scrolling through social media accounts. They were outdoors, enjoying nature and the allure of Bigfoot. And if you strip all the bullshit away, isn't that what it's really all about? In a recent Murfreesboro press conference, a Tennessee couple claims to have documented overwhelming evidence supporting the existence of Bigfoot. R.D. Rhodes Jr. and his wife Brenda spent a year in the woods, investing around $7,000 and capturing over 60 photos of Bigfoot in five different states. Their findings are chronicled in their new book, The Bigfoot Finders, where the couple provides a brief history of the creature, its doubters, and share their own unique experiences. Rhodes explained in the press conference that the real finding for the couple happens when they go home and zoom in on the pictures that they've taken. According to Rhodes, only about 1 in 10 Bigfoot photographed in the wild are initially seen in the woods, with most being sensed through smell and sound, prompting the couple to start snapping pictures all around them. Hey guys, where it all started, six Bigfoot, two dogmen, all in one day, uh, this is where Brenda smelled them and we took the pictures, our first ones ever, almost a year to the day, maybe a year and two. Rhodes' fascination with Bigfoot began in 1982 when he claimed to have seen a seven-foot-tall Sasquatch on his grandfather's farm. And despite the initial fear, Rhodes says that an unspoken agreement between him and the beast led to a calm encounter. Years later, another experience occurred on a late-night fishing trip where Rhodes and a companion faced glowing amber eyes. Suppressed for decades, Rhodes began researching Bigfoot in his 40s, eventually meeting Brenda who shared his interest, probably at a conference. They officially embarked on their Bigfoot finding journey together last year in 2023. Beyond their personal experiences, the couple plans to release a step-by-step -step guide on how to photograph Bigfoot, emphasizing caution in the woods at all times, especially for those traveling with children. Surprisingly enough though, the couple discourages others from doing the same, from actively seeking out the creature claiming it's highly unstable, comparing them to people with varying dispositions. But, like most researchers, the couple does stress the importance of respecting the creature, asserting that capturing or harming them in any way would be highly unethical. In the Bigfoot Finders book, Rhodes dives into the human element of these cryptids, providing readers with an interesting and enjoyable exploration, even if you don't always agree with the pictures. The Bigfoot Finders is available on all digital platforms, as well as paperback and hardcover. The link to pick it up will be, of course, in our description.
Hey, this is Chuck Larson. You're watching the CARC channel on YouTube. Here he's again. This is Chuck Larson with his picks of the week. Evening, everybody. It's Chuck Larson with my top picks for the week of March 4th, 2024. First off, it's Bigfoot Case Files. My husband was attacked by a Sasquatch in our yard. There are two stories narrated in this episode, both of them really interesting. The second story is the one about the attack. Definitely worth a listen. Despite my protestings, my husband decided to go out and investigate. His expectation that he was going to spotlight whoever it was and warn them off the property with his rifle. He wanted them to know there were now people here to guard the land, but that's not how it went. When he returned back to the house, he told me he never saw anyone, but someone had thrown several large limbs at him, and he said one limb was close enough to be in the size of a young tree itself and was bigger than his forearm. He said that one had come from behind and actually knocked him down. The next morning, I could see a large diagonal bruise forming across his back where it had hit him with a lot of force. He also said that a lot of the limbs were coming from different directions, which meant there had to be several of them out there, whoever they were. Next, it's Sasquatch Theory, outdoorsman stalked by Bigfoot in Pennsylvania. It always knew where I was, it threw a deer at me. This episode hit home for me because the area where the hunter had his experience is within an hour and a half from where I live in North Jersey. Looks like I know where I'm investigating this spring. That's when I can see it, the silhouette up there roaring at me and and screaming and yelling throughout the whole valley. You can hear it echoing. And that's when I could see it moving. It was moving. It was going to the left, going to the right, and then it stopped. It was going. You know? Yeah. I kind of wanted to explore up there more because it was a big pine forest up there. When I went up there, it was snowing, and I didn't see any tracks. And that 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 pine forest is like pitch dark inside of there. It's so thick, you know. That's where it went in at. And finally, it's Discover Sasquatch, Episode 8, Tracking the Hairy Giants of Appalachia, hosted by Chris O.G. Reinhardt. This is another fantastic podcast on the Untold Radio Network. On this episode, Chris speaks with researcher Eric Tipton. I enjoyed listening to how Eric uses his tracking abilities and his research and how it actually helped him track down the big guy for his first confirmed Bigfoot sighting. These are things that we have noticed through the years that has happened to us and being being the tracker and then turning around and then realizing, wait a minute, this thing just, just did a one eight. This, this thing just made a hard left and dropped. And now it's, it's, it's taking the the low ground. Why is it taking the low ground? Well, then you start looking around you look at where you're at. You look at how high your elevation is versus now they're dropping down to where their elevation is going to be. You look at where the sun's at. You, you turn around, you look where your shadow's at. You look at the foliage, how thick is the foliage? Am I going to cast my shadow out past that foliage? All of these things you have to think of because even though I still believe it's a creature of, uh, to, to, to a degree of intelligence, it's still a creature with intelligence. And these are my top picks for this week. Brendan, take us out. All right, folks, it pains me once again to tell you that we are all the time for this week's episode. Episode 49 is now in the record books. I'd like to thank you for watching and remind you to like and share everything we do here. It's very important. But before we go, we've got a couple of big announcements now. Next week, we are originally supposed to have a show scheduled, show 50. But unfortunately, yours truly is scheduled to go under the knife for thoracic surgery. And the date got moved up, so I'm not going to be able to get a show out one more time before I go under the knife. And starting in May, very soon, we are joining the Untold Radio Network. So this week in Bigfoot is moving to the Untold Radio Network YouTube channel. It'll be the same great show, a little bit faster, a little bit better, and with a couple of new faces in May. So I'd like to thank you for your support and loyalty. Stick around for updates and announcements on CARC Universal, and we'll see you in May on the Untold Radio Network, same night, 8 o'clock. Thanks again. Be safe.